it, it drives me nuts because because as, as a consumer myself, not an industry guy, you know, trying to weed through all this bullshit, it will drive especially suppressors as as yeah, a especially. Yeah. That, that's such an esoteric, you know, everything's kind of like can, kept in house and kept very hush hush, um, and for a lot of good reasons because you know various stuff that requires actually government testing and whatnot where they actually get a lot of their stuff you know wrung out mm-hmm. you know i i don't get to see that so trying to divine you know what is good and what isn't on suppressor use um other than getting on silencer talk and like reading a fucking shit ton and then trying to 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 formulate what i read in respect to in respect to uh you know, my professional requirements, you know, what I view as, as, is important relative to what the industry views as important, i.e. the consumer base of the people that are buying the cans on the public side relative to the hundreds of cans that are being purchased by governments and, and militaries and, and law enforcement agencies, you know, it, I don't understand, I, I can't, Like that's, there's way too much information that's not being put out that I don't get the, the access to. So it's very difficult for me as a consumer to make a salient decision. That's why I've waited so long to buy a can and where I'm, where I'm just basically like going, okay, fucking SOCOM says the surefire stuff's good. I'll take that. Not because it's necessarily the best because their professional requirements match closer to what I would require Mm-hmm. as a professional and a consumer on the civilian side. So it's, it's really difficult to actually navigate that industry where, where ARs are easy by comparison. Cause it's, you know, it's a TDP. Like I, I know what to look for, for a good, you know, good AR right off the bat. Like mm-hmm. I don't have, I can pop the thing open and start eyeballing stuff and basically make a determination of whether or not it's good based off what I can see. And I can't do that with hands. You can easily, easily make changes, make, changes, make, it, better. make it better. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I can, I, yeah, I can do that, too. I can basically, like, this is fucked up, this is fucked up, they need to improve this, this, and this, right off the bat. I don't have to even think about it. Cans, I can't do that, because I can't see inside of what's actually in there, and everybody's very hush-hush about how they do baffles and what materials it is and how much of that material is actually in the can. Is it all Inconel? Is it all Stellite? Is it stainless steel or is it partially stainless steel and Inconel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is it welded or is it glued? That's not put out there to the average consumer. Yeah. You have, you're, 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 buying, you're buying sight unseen. You, yeah. You have to ask and be very specific with all those questions. And here's the thing with like the military acceptance and fielding, like once, once the cans are put out there, like they are matched to the guns. Like they'll go through, they'll get so many cans. They'll go through and draw a can, shoot it for groups, max spread, cold bore, all that stuff. Like they will have a pick of the litter and the first gun's going to shoot best, and the second gun of the remainder cans, it's going to go through, and they're going to match the gun to the can. Um, so you get, a lot, you get some fleet yaw there. didn't perform on any gun. They go back, whatever they do with it. Well, as a consumer, I'm going to go to my SOT, buy this can do the paperwork submit all that tax stamp stuff wait for it it's already got the serial number for that can out of the pile of cans i'm going to get one can i don't even know if it's going to shoot good with my gun and that's what i get stuck with i can't even open the hood and look under it i can't do anything to that can i'm stuck with it forever yeah and that's what makes it such a, a tentative purchase for me why I've waited so long because I've been looking at everything and I'm sure a lot of uh, like if the, if the hearing protection act actually happened like that would change the demographic entirely 
mm. the Hearing Protection Act, only because like it wouldn't be a I'm stuck with it for fucking ever. I need to make the best purchase that I can afford at that time period now. Like you could go to your FFL to buy one and he could have like 10 cans there and be like, Hey, can I just try them out? See what works best again? Sure. Shoot a group, shoot a group, shoot a group. I don't like this one. Walk out with it. (laughs) You could actually tune the, you know, pan pick the can. It works best on your gun. That'd be fantastic. Like I got lucky with my cans. Like they both work great on my two guns that I have that they stay on. And I got lucky, man. It's not that much of a crapshoot, but I just like I got lucky because these things are sub in it. That's both a SPR and a SBR ten and a half inch gun. They're both sub in it. Lucky. Who knows where that SBR is past a hundred yards there? Well, how many? What, what's the length on it? It's ten and a half inch or ten three, whichever. I'm sure it'll be fine. You know, out to three yeah. four. I, I'd I'd say it'd probably be fine. It'll probably be fine out to um, where it goes terminal or around four fifty. 500. I mean, you, you can keep them all in a torso at five. Yeah, then if, if you're keeping them all in the A zone out to five, then that's a probably a sub MOA gun. Everybody assumes that barrel length is proportionate to accuracy, and that's not fucking true. It's it's more relative. There's there's other factors, you know, kind of kind of like the, the whole eight and a half PSD discussion we were having. Um, there's there's a lot more factors relative to muzzle velocity and the amount of RPMs you're spinning that bullet on relative to the length mm-hmm. of the barrel itself yeah. uh, than, than just outright barrel length. Like, barrel length means nothing in that respect because a 9-inch barrel, 300 blackout, would probably perform better in that regard than a 10.5-inch or 8.5, um, 556. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why they, why they convinced the Saudis to go to 6.8. I know. Well, what a joke, right? But, dude, that 6.8's bad. Like, no, I know it's bad, but it's it's it's, it's the same increased... size gun, and it, it's 308 energy out of an 8-inch barrel. <laughs> it, it's But it, everything's formulated to run, man. You just can't chop any old 6.8 barrel to 8 inches and expect it to run. Actually, I got one right here. It's a tiny little gun. PSD. Yeah, it's the six. No, no. Yeah, PSD. Dude, when but I when I uh, saw that thing, flash. when I when I actually first saw that that six eight PSD, I was all about that thing before I knew better. Um, and and it's 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 perfect because it's actually built to cause, meaning it's built for what the. Mm-hmm. For, for the requirement itself and the barrel length. Mm-hmm. But it, then when people try to throw it on the 5.6 the, the five, or 5.56 five, five, side, I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. Like, I, I want a 10-inch minimum. 10.5-inch minimum for 5.56. Five, and even, like, and uh, you get so much more from an 11.5 11, 11 that, you know, why even bother? Like, it's an inch. And you get so much more, especially if you're not gas pistoning it, you're you're di in it. You get so much more out of that, and it's it's functionally no different. I challenge anybody to actually pick one up and be able to tell the difference. Can't. I mean, it's, it's this and this. Yeah. Like, but once once you get past the 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 uh, the gas port, you know, it's it's really not that big of a difference in terms of the like it it doesn't change. The, the handiness of the gun, it just changes dynamically the function of it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's at the ragged edge of its uh, um, of the dwell time. Yeah. Like, they got that port wide open because it only has like an inch and a half of burn behind the bullet forward of that gas port. 
12 and a half sets wide open. Yeah. 12 and a half is actually the, the perfect little sweet spot for an SBR. Yeah. For the eye. And, and really, like, that's not that, you know, you add a can of six inches and you get a, you've got a 14 and a half inch S, or, you know, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. You just burn yourself higher up on your leg. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like everybody's all about but about uh, cans on SBRs until they they do a transition, <laughs> and then that can rests right on their thigh, and they're like, "Hey, yeah, with the single point." Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Like basically playing, doing this right between your legs <laughs> with a Ding fucking. Dong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, fucking single points, man. I, I I want I want to burn them out of existence. Yeah. <laughs> Got, you know what it is? Is guys don't do enough transitions. Yeah. They they don't do enough it's transition like drums that are actually live and hot to get them to go. Maybe this isn't actually the fucking best way to do things. So you got to take them beyond transitions and have them do something other than the transition because trying to do anything other than just go to a pistol static with a single point is horrible. It, you can see, mm-hmm. like I've got guys that still believe in single points, but they don't try to, you know, manipulate. Take a knee. Yeah, take a knee, manipulate an object, climb over something, move something around, cuff a cuff suspect. Somebody. Yeah, exactly. Having that shit all in your workspace. I got my, oh, I got my ass beat doing that aggressor stuff with that SWAT team, and it was they had me on the ground, they had me cuffed, and the dude's got his knee on my back, and he's fid- fiddling with his sling. It was a two point, but he had it set up on the receiver end plate and up close to the hang or to the uh, barrel nut on the rear of the rail, and so. His gun's just like all over the place, dude. And that thing spun around, and I caught that buttstock to the back of my head. And the only thing that saved me eating it was because, oh, they hadn't even cuffed me yet. He had my hands behind my behind my head, so it busted me in the knuckles. I was like, control that fucking gun, man. <laughs> he just smashed me in the head with your rifle. That was actually in the talking points afterwards in the hot wash. No, I think my actually, actually actually called the t- training timeout. I was like, "Hey, let me see that thing." And I reset his sling. I was like, "Now try it." And he slung it behind him. I was like, "Oh, that's so much better." I'm like, "Yeah, it is. It feels great now." <laughs> well, I think my biggest uh, single point fuck you was uh, when I was climbing over a wall for the first time with said single point. <laughs> and the, no, no, it wasn't that. It was even worse. It was me going over the wall and then the rifle going. You know, right on my face. <laughs> and I was just like, I was so pissed off at that point because I was fighting it all the way up until that. It was just like, nope, no more. Oh, my None face. The- my beautiful face. Not the meal ticket. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was so pissed off at that whole whole night, and that was just the, the icing on the cake. <laughs> like the, the only application for a single point that I see is a breaching shotgun, like a shorty, a shorty yeah. breaching gun that you got on a hook. Yep. That's the, that's it. Other than that, I'm just like, mm. nah. 